Welcome back for another episode of Growing Pomegranate Trees from Seeds. It's day 159. My seedling is still crooked with a very flimsy stem. I don't know if these plants always grow like this. I don't think so, but at the same time, I'm kind of dismayed as to why this thing hasn't developed a thicker, more woody stalk yet. Uh, the growth has been stunted, and I'll go into the reasons later on. So this weed that's flanking it is so tall compared to the pomegranate seedling itself. So um, it's a very hardy weed. I don't know what kind of species this is, but it seems like it's either branching out or it's ready to flower. I'm not sure which. So for the time being, this is actually a more interesting development than this very slow growing pomegranate seedling. So I'm watering with my showering can. And the first thing you'll notice is it just tips over. It looks like it's going to break, and it never does. Luckily, it has this uh, weedy neighbor to rest on. But it's not very comforting. It's been like that for a long time. I wonder if the stem will ever thicken. On day 172, you can see it's gotten taller, and it always looks upright and erect. But the moment you spray it with some water or water it, um, with a showering pail, it just falls over. So it's a pretty sad sight. Maybe if I had gotten off to a better start in a better growing medium, then this all could have been avoided. But um, I don't get the feeling that this species has a very sturdy stalk to begin with. Maybe that'll change as time goes on. So this weed continues to get taller. It has a um, very interesting foliage. And I don't know if it's meant to look like this in a while, but the leaves sort of curl downwards. It's getting taller and taller. So it turns out it was just branching. It's not ready to flower yet. So I think it could be an annual, just some sort of flowering weed, but I'm not too sure. So if you know what species this is, uh, please say something in the comments. You can see it's so many times taller than my pomegranate seedling. I'm using this mouthwash bottle, used mouthwash bottle, to house um, some dilutions of imidacloprid, an insecticide that I've been using to dunk my soil with to prevent fungus snag growth and spider mites and whatnot. So you can see the base of the stalk here for my pomegranate seedling is all pinched off and uh, darkened. So uh, I've seen that elsewhere uh, this year for some of my other plants, and I'm not quite sure what it means. I don't think it's a good omen. So on day 178, so um, I noticed that both the weed and the pomegranate seedling have trouble standing upright. And this seems to be a common theme with potting mix usage. Potting mix is very loose and porous and it slowly rots away over time as all organic mediums do so once the organic matter starts to rot away it'll lose mass gives out poison gases um, it uses up all the oxygen in the soil there are many reasons that i've gone into in other videos as to why potting mix is not a good growing medium and in 2019 i feel like i've proven many times over that um, natural soil and sand are much better growing mediums. So in all my other plant growing videos in 2019, I basically transplanted anything that wasn't in natural soil and sand into a said mixture, like a 50-50 mixture. And by getting rid of all this potting mix, I've also gotten rid of all my fungus gnats. I can now do work on my balcony without getting a whole bunch of bugs indoors and I don't see spider mites anymore but a lot of that has to do also with my use of imidacloprid as an insecticide um, although spider mites aren't really insects so this is I don't know it looks sort of like a, a carabean or some other kind of a legume bean pod but I don't know what that is I think it's just a really big chunk of potting mix Sometimes they shred up entire trees when they make this stuff. So uh, it's got a lot of wood chips and bark in it. 
But as you can see, the root system of this pomegranate seedling goes entirely deep. It doesn't go uh, horizontally. So like with other fruit trees that have been growing this year in 2019, I think the, the common theme is that the root system wants to go deep. There's usually a tap root that runs deep. Although in this case, the root is very thin. So I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the growing medium. It's just not a healthy growing medium. But for this weed, I'm going to buttress it from all sides and put back this uh, moist potting mix to see how that does. So it, it's gotten this far, it's gotten this tall on its own without any special attention in just potting mix and it seems to have a better off root system than my pomegranate seedling. But I've had to keep adjusting it and trying to guide it to grow upright so that's why everything is uh, curved here like a bunch of uh, fish hooks. So as you can see the pomegranate seedling looks pretty sad next to it um, but it does seem to be relatively healthy. I've seen much better in other plant series but this one is still alive and I hope I'm not making a big mistake by doing another transplant but as you may recall from earlier in this series everything died from this transplant into this pot. I lost six out of my seven pomegranate seedlings so they met their demise within a few days um, actually almost immediately I think in the first 48 hours um, I could see that at least three out of those six that are now gone were just doomed right off the bat. So here's a container that I was using to try to germinate some seeds and get another growing series started indoors. I don't think those white clumps are mold. I think those are mushroom mycelial mats and they should be very beneficial to my pomegranate seedling after I do the transplant. So anyway, these three hard seeds that you see before you are cucamonga manroot seeds. It's a very interesting vine, a native that grows in San Diego County in Southern California. And I thought they would germinate in indoor mild conditions in the sealed container, but apparently not after many months. So I'm digging them out. They're just occupying volume and acting like rocks that may sprout someday and compete with my plant so I'm getting rid of them. So to me this half sand, half clay soil mixture is very valuable because I have to haul it out from the wild and it's a very good growing medium. It's very nutritious. That's why I'm recycling this, reusing it. Now if those white colonies were mold colonies then perhaps I'd be doing a great disservice to my uh, pomegranate seedling and even kill it but I don't think that's what this is. I think um, that's a beneficial mushroom fungus, essentially. So I'm using this to pad the bottom. I don't want the roots sitting on the plastic bottom right off the bat. And you can see the total lack of structure here. The roots are very, very flimsy. The, the stem can't even support the weight of the foliage. It's the complete opposite of me digging up my four-year-old Joshua tree and I'm just putting this dry stuff on top and this is more of um, maybe a sandy loam going on top. I mean it's got some clay in there for sure but when it's dry it looks a lot different. So um, yeah I've got uh, more of a half clay soil mixture with sand on the bottom and on the top it's sort of like half sandy loam, half sand. Um, so yeah, I'm watering and that should take a while to sink in, but because it's sandy loam, it's it's going to do a little bit better in terms of permeability than uh, clay soil. So it's day 183. I let the weed grow in the other pot in the background. You can see it's tilted over and this thing is growing some new leaves. Seems like it could have a bout of explosive growth and those leaves on the bottom have shed. I'll just leave them there to fertilize the soil. So if the mushroom mycelia bound to the root system already, then they could reach up to the top of the soil and help decompose any leaves and other organic detritus on top and get those nutrients back in. I've heard it can happen in as little as 60 days, but 
I have a feeling it could be a little faster than that. I think 60 days is maybe the time limit in which all the nutrients have been recycled. So this thing seems to be faring a little bit better if only for the reason that this, uh, all this sand and clay soil and silt are much, doing a much better job at buttressing this thing from all directions. So as you can see I'm spraying and it's not actually falling all the way over. It's just slightly tilted but it was already like that. So this is the best it can do and um, yeah it is better than what was in that potting mix as you can see in the background that weed is like a meter tall and it's just all keeled over so if a weed can't stand up on its own then it's pretty much uh, that growing medium is hopeless so it's day 215 and as you can see from all this organic detritus I cut up that weed because it wasn't going anywhere it wasn't doing well it's another indictment against potting mix and I sprinkled the remains on top and the nutrients are getting back in weeds are starting to grow the foliage has changed in coloration it hasn't added that many more leaves but they are bigger and they are very healthy waxy dark green right now so among the weeds you can see in the background is something that's um, it's kind of odd in fact all of the weeds growing in this pot are very intriguing so I can't wait to see what develops because this pomegranate seed thing is just growing slower than molasses it's growing at a glacial pace but I do expect it to accelerate in growth pretty soon it's been quite a while and I think within another few weeks we're gonna see some real progress I do have high hopes for the future of this series because I do think this will eventually toughen up and stop falling over and start to branch out and get a thicker stem so it's day 220 so one of the many thin green vines native to the San Diego Chaparral is coiling around this. I'm going to get rid of that. You can see this thing is a lot taller. There's some new growth coming off uh, elongated stem on the top. I don't know what that is. It looks interesting. Um, these are just the sort of plants and weeds that you see outside in the wild on your hikes. And you never know uh, what that is. Uh, maybe that's chemise or kamis, depending on how you pronounce it, like some clovers there. Um, yeah, I think this one is one of the more interesting ones. Um, not just because it's big, but, you know, why is the vine coiling around this? It, it's just a weird sight, and I don't know what species this is, but there are many of these thin green vines. Um, it's a dry environment out there, so I'm not really... Um, you know expecting vines but um, there are many vine species out there in the wild and they don't have trees to climb but you know they have uh, bushes and the chaparral shrubs to climb on so this is a very odd pairing of two plants and I don't want this to strangle the stem in any way so I'm just kind of uh, going to undo unravel this coil and let the vine um, grow wherever else it wants to. Um, I think it's too early for this pomegranate seedling to be overwhelmed by another plant. And um, I don't want to destroy this vine either, but I know the next time I water, it might get drowned and some of the foliage might rot. Um, but I think this thing is, uh, yeah, it's a real trooper. It'll probably coil around everything. So I have no idea what that is. It's day 227 to the 9 o'clock direction. You see that weed. Uh, that has very interesting foliage. So anyway, I went on a hike with a friend and I cut up all these little flowering weeds, mostly the same species. I scattered everything on top here and all of my other plants as well on top of the, the soil and sand mixture to serve as fertilizer. This uh, weedy vine is getting bigger leaves. It's very interesting. It's determined to coil around this plant. I think I'll just let it do whatever it wants. Um, it was going to keep coiling back around this plant anyway. So I don't know if the stem has gotten any tougher or thicker, but it is uh, taller at least, and it's not falling over as often. 
I think the plant is really starting to regain some vigor following the transplant. It took several weeks, but here we are. And you can see there's kind of a gap between the old foliage that's smaller and all the really big uh, lighter green stuff on top. So I don't know how big the pomegranate leaves can get, but you know, this isn't really that promising. Most of the other fruit trees that I've grown have uh, much bigger leaves. So as you can see, I'm spraying water and this thing is, uh, yeah, it's just all blowing around. Yeah, because it has a lot more foliage now, it can also collect a lot more uh, water or raindrops, if you will, and it's all falling over once again. But it never breaks. Um, every time I look out window after a few hours and the next day, it's uh, standing nearly completely upright. So the vine doesn't really add any structure or help this thing. Uh, doesn't like prevent it from falling over. So yeah, I water a little bit and I'm um, spraying. Uh, this will be great for the weeds and this will help accelerate the decomposition of all those uh, weeds that I chopped up. And I think there's going to be an explosion of growth over the next few weeks. So I think this is the, the proper way to fertilize. It's very natural. Um, uh, in this case, they're not dead leaves. I accelerated. Uh, I sort of cheated by going out and getting all these uh, exogenous weeds and chopping them up here. So it's day 233. The weed growth is explosive. Just like I predicted, I don't think this is a coincidence. The leaves on all of these weeds are bigger. So this is a great environment. I think the weeds will thrive. I can't let them get too big and overshadow the main star of this show. Uh, for the clovers and other things, I can harvest leaves and scatter them on top where they'll um, get recycled in terms of nutrients by the fungi underneath. So this vine is pretty robust. If it gets too overpowering, I can always uh, harvest some of its leaves and use it for fertilizer. There are some weedy species that are the early pioneers of any ecosystem that's recovering from a fire or being cleared and they can mine uh, minerals and other nutrients out of the soil that perhaps uh, different plants like uh, more slow growing fruit trees cannot mine out of the soil themselves. So um, that's just how the ecosystem works. If I were to pull out all those weeds now and let the roots and the shoots just uh, decay on the surface, this pomegranate seedling would do even better. So, so far I haven't used uh, nitrogen fertilization in the form of miracle Grow or anything like that this year. My approaches in 2019 have mostly been natural and organic, although I'm really more about the experimentation and the science behind why things work rather than just blindly doing the same approach over and over. So thank you for watching. I think this series is on the uptick and this uh, pomegranate seedling will really take off over the next few weeks. So thanks for watching and please stay tuned.